Hi there and welcome! This video is an expansion to my mouse tracking tutorial for Blender. We will talk about how to control which objects are added, how to add random objects, how to limit the amount of objects that can be added, and finally how to delete objects again. For this tutorial you will need Blender, and you should have watched my tutorial on mouse tracking, as this one here is just an expansion of that. In this first part of the tutorial, I will show you how you can assign different cubes to be added at the position of the tracker, so that you are able to manipulate which cubes are added in the game, and doing so with the keyboard. So I've left off um, with this code for the tracker that it's lifted up one unit so that we can add dynamic cubes. For that purpose we need to add different cubes with different colors so we can differentiate between them. I will just duplicate these cubes and make them single users so that they don't share the same material, doing so with the U key. So first off let's get a green cube, then a red one, and a blue one. Now we should also name those so we can recognize them when setting up the logic. So this is the blue underscore cube, whoops, underscore cube, the red underscore cube, and the green underscore cube. Now I will shrink them a bit so that they don't take away too much space on our little screen here. And we can go back to the first layer. Again, as in the first tutorial, it is important that these cubes are not on the active layers, so that multiple copies of them can be added. Now, if you remember how we set up the first dynamic um, way of adding cubes, this one will be very similar, but this time we will use a property that will tell the tracker which cube we selected. So first of all, we need to add a property, an integer. Integer are numbers from 1 to 9 or from 0 to 9 and any number, so you can go as high as you want, but no broken numbers like 1.1 or similar. And yeah, full numbers. So we just give the integer a name, I will call that cube selection. So we do know this one is for the selection of the cube. And now we set a similar property up. We want, last time we had, if we left click, um, yeah, the object gets added. So I will just test it out if that still works. So we go for the green cube and having a tap left click. So it just adds one per click and it still works. Now I want to make those cubes dynamic. Forgot that step dynamic 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 so they interact with the environment and now we want to change the conditions in which which cube gets added so we can minimize all of these here as we don't need to touch them right now just keep in mind that this is the mouse click you can name it it's always a good um, habit to name all your logic so you can find this later or even if you send this stuff to other people they will understand what this is for so we'll just call it the mouse click. Now, we need to set up the condition that if, for example, this parameter is 1, the blue cube will be added. So for that, we first off give um, add three property sensors, because we have three cubes. Now this is rather, rather simple. We need three AND actuators. So if the mouse is clicked and the property of our cube selection equals one, then this cube is added. It's, it's that simple. Now we can add two more, um, sorry, added objects. Added object. We need one for the red cube and one for the blue cube. So we've got this first property. If a code, uh, the property equals two, and the mouse is clicked, it will add the red cube. And the last one is for the number three. 
if the number if the, the um, property has the number three the value of three and the mouse is clicked the blue cube will be added now we can check if that worked by um, selecting the eye next to the property going to our render tab and selecting debug properties so once we start the game we will see which value our property currently has now it is zero so if i click nothing should happen as we said only if it's one two or three it will add blocks so let's set that to one and it should add the green cube and so it does now it's one simple step away from being able to change these properties with a keyboard for that we can set up an empty or let's let's just keep it simple and keep everything on one object so we add keyboard three actuators or three sensors sorry and give them the numbers one two and three for the keys so let's zoom in a bit so one two and three and now all we need to do is when one is pushed we need to assign the property of one to the cubes um to the we need to assign the value of one to the cube property so that for two as well a property actuator and for three as well so assign cubes selection two assign cube selection three Now, if we go in game, we can see here currently one is selected, so it places green cubes. If we now hit two, two is selected and it places red cubes. And if we hit three, blue cubes are placed. So this way we can now control which object we, objects we want to add. Obviously you can change the objects from cubes to anything you like. Now the same thing can be done with random blocks, so you don't have control over which blocks get placed. This might be useful for a game where you want to have random blocks appearing, such as, let's say, I don't know, spells or objects that are in the way of something or whatever you can think of. So for that purpose, we will delete the keyboard shortcuts as we don't want to have control over the cube selection anymore by ourselves and we will delete two of the property or oh, let's delete all of the property uh, actuators and now we will add a random actuator we will also need an always actuator to start this random actuator and select true level triggering again so it always changes the um, the value of this integer now we go to int uniform. This will let us select a minimum and maximum range on which numbers get selected. So if we set it to one and three, randomly numbers between one and three will select it at the interval of zero currently. So every time the always sensor is triggered, new numbers will be generated onto this property. Now onto this property means we have to select it here. The seed changes the algorithm with which um, the number is generated and that matters if you don't want the same cube to start with at the beginning. Now let's set this up a bit so the number doesn't change too fast. Let's go to 5 or something so we can actually see at the top left what is happening and hit P. As you can see at the top left it switches between 1, 2 and 3 and if we now click we will always get a different block. So this way you can make the adding of blocks random. Obviously this random generator can be used for a lot of things, but in this case it's quite handy if you want to have different versions of a model so it doesn't look like the same over and over. So you could, for example, bring variety to a game where you can build something or however you like. Currently, we can create an infinite amount of cubes. So how do we limit that? That's also quite an easy step. Now, we only need to add a new property that will work as the counter, so to say, and again, an integer. Let's call that amount. 
And we need to define that only if the amount is bigger than zero, we can place blocks. For that, we will create a property sensor and set it to interval. And the interval reaches from one at minimum to, yeah, kind of an infinite number. So we'll just type in some lines. And our property will be the amount. Now we need to connect this to all the left click logics. So what we set up before, if the property is three and you click left, it will add the blue cube. Now, if the property property is three, you left click and the amount of value is between one and this infinite number, it will add the cube. And this we will need to add to all our definitions. Now, our amount is zero, so if I press P, it shouldn't add any when clicking, and so it does. Let's change it to one, and it works again. Now, we only need to decrease the amount with every left click, left click we do. So, we'll just go to Add Actuator, Property, Our Amount, Add, even if we want to decrease it, we just add a negative number, minus one, and connect it to the mouse click sensor. So now, every time we click, it gets decreased by one. We set the value, the amount to one, so we can only build one block. Now if we set this up to, let's say, 10, we can only build 10 blocks. You can obviously create some sort of currency or whatever to buy new things. So you could set up a new logic that says if you pay 100 resources, whatever that might be, you get 10 new blocks and so on and so forth. I've talked a lot about how to add cubes, but how do we delete them again? This is also quite a simple task. For that purpose, let's select our green cube and add two sensors, mouse over and mouse right click. So mouse over and mouse right click. As we already set the left button to add cubes. Now the mouse over is important that it's not mouse over any, but only mouse over this one. And what happens if both appear at the same time? It will end the object. So add a trader, edit object, end object. Now let's just connect those two and go back to the game. So if now green cubes are added and we right click a green cube, it will get deleted again. Now this is pretty nice for single cubes, but how do we do this for all of the green cubes or all of the blue cubes? This is also quite simple. For that purpose, let's just set a keyboard um, shortcut, for example, the X key and edit object and object. This logic will always be executed for all cubes at the same time because we haven't defined that this X only applies to this only cube. So if we now go into the game and create a bunch of cubes and now had X, all the red cubes should vanish. And so they do. So this way you can delete cubes again. Now obviously it won't increase the amount again. So how do we now get back our amount count after deleting cubes? This only works for single deleted cubes as the deletion of all cubes will only fire the logic we are going to set up now once. So if you plan on adding something like de delete all the objects you added, um, you need to reset the amount and not only yeah, do it for each cube, count each cube. For that, you need advanced logic, and usually advanced logic means you need to learn Python. And since this is a quite simplified tutorial, we'll just focus on logic breaks. So let's set that up. Again, this is a rather simple step. We just need to connect the tracker to the cube now. So for that purpose, we need to shift select both, both layers, right click the green cube at first, and then the tracker. And now, Add an actuator which says every time we delete the cube, the amount gets added one value. So add to amount one. And now we can just drag the connection from our deletion um, logic to our tracker. So now 
if we go into the game again keep in mind to only select the active layer um the, the game layer and not the cube layer and add a few cubes you can now see the amount is at six and if we delete the green cubes again it will go back to eight so this works so that's it for this tutorial I hope you were able to follow me and again, if you have any questions or encounter any issues, just comment and we try to solve it. Thanks for watching!